All right, everyone. Welcome back to yes? Skyrim. What did you need? So I traveled back here. I killed the dragon again. Um, but of course, this isn't the end of it because um, I believe I'll need resist fire now. Well, soon. And I'll definitely want my strong arrows because we're about to fight another dragon priest. Oh, please don't attack. I just saw another dragon in the background. Okay, let's hope he stays in the background. And there we are, that's Croesus. I think that's like the dragon word for sorry. Okay, so... Oh, oh, I just absorbed the soul of that thing. Forgot. What are you doing to my dragon corpse? I didn't loot that thing yet. Oh, by the way, Croesus is very powerful. And we can still see that dragon flying about in the background. He has that fireball staff spell thing. And he's very keen on dodging arrows. But I can stagger him occasionally. So there's that. To be considered. Okay, I'll drink the um, fire resist potion. And I'll also do the fortifying health, health thing and some minor healing. I don't want him to be too far away though, so I'll just loot the dragon quickly. I'll take it all. And I'll try to lure him back a bit. Croesus, I'm here. Come on, come on. His range is incredible, as you can tell. And his damage is not bad, so um, don't underestimate him. I don't want him to fall though. Yes, come back. You know you want to. His fireballs are very strong, as I've said. But as we've also noticed, I'm able to stagger him. Wow. Okay. Back to... Plentiful healing? Well, no, I'll take the weaker ones first. There we go. That's Croesus done. Um, these dragon priests always leave themselves as a corpse and an ash pile, I believe. And this is what we want. You see this... Um, this mask, lockpicking, archery, and alchemy are all better. And his powerful staff, of course. The ash pile is empty. But that's fine. We also get a word of power. Voice. Throw voice. I believe that was one of those... Oh, we also got fool throw yes. voice. What did you need? And far throw voice. Oh yes, I believe that was the very shout I wanted. Let me just quickly get to magic. Shouts. Is that throw voice? Yes. This is the shout where you basically point at something, you shout and the sound emerges there, so it distracts people. Um, okay, I need to unlock that first. I've got six dragon souls. So, yes, press the right button please. Um, I will unlock that to the highest level, because at the highest level, this shout has a 5 second recharge. 
It's it's not very like interesting, I guess. Not very effectful. <gasps> Did I just get a subtitle? Hey, melon nose. <laughs> Why? <gasps> All right. I'm guessing that's the the the, the reason it lures people is because it kind of insults whoever is around. Maybe. Don't know. But yeah, that that would cause all enemies in the area to go check out that spot. Yes. Um, what did you need? Which is ob obviously very valuable for an assassin. What do we get here? An ebony sword, which is nice. So, successful we were. And now we want to get to Windhelm, which I believe I've not discovered yet. So I'm guessing I'll just go to Windhelm. Wait, I want to go to Winterhold. This is Windhelm. Got those confused. Let's go to Windhelm and find the um, carriage to take us to Winterhold. This is Windhelm. I want to go to Winterhold. Yes. Oh, and look, I'm almost level 27. Lockpicking is used to open locked doors and containers faster and with fewer broken lockpicks. Indeed so. In fact, when you've got lockpicking level 200, your lockpicks... Well, you get a perk that prevents lockpicks from breaking. Um, What did I want? Oh, yes, I wanted to check out if that mask is better than what I have. My current hood gives me just 20% more bow damage. The Croesus mask has better armor and it increases alchemy and lock picking, lock picking as well so it's better in every single way oh come on there's another dragon in the background as you just saw and there's our carriage need a ride where do you want to go i want to go to winterhold climb and back and we'll be off Goods and wares of all kinds. Have you ever met video. one of them cats? Khajiit, I think they call themselves. I hear there's whole. Indeed, the Khajiit come from elsewhere. Once a source of pride for the people of Winterhold, the college is now shunned and feared. Okay. Um, we'll learn about all that later. Maybe. All right. Magic. Shouts. Clear skies. Let's see if that works. Look! spells all day. Don't just walk away from me. Where do you think you're going? To the inn for a drink, of course. Where else could I even go in this god's forsaken town? And what? Where are these vampires coming from? I need to we ask you to stop. That world. shouting is making people nervous. Fine, I won't happen. Won't ha won't happen again. Good. Glad we straightened that out. Fine. I got another letter from a friend, by the way. Um, I'll just show you. Wait, no journal. Um, miscellaneous. Find the source of power in Shriekwind Bastion. I'm guessing I should disable all of these. And enable miscellaneous. So this is the location of the Elder Scroll quest, and then there's a source of power. Where exactly? Oh, down here. There. Quite close to Falkreath, so we might go there at some point, but not yet. For now, we want to join the castle of. The, the College of Winterhold, the magic school. Cross the bridge at your own peril. The way is dangerous and the gate will not open. You shall not gain entry. What is this place? Oh, forgive me. Most who arrive here do so because they have heard of the college beforehand. This is the College of Winterhold, a safe haven for mages in Skyrim, a place of wisdom and arcane knowledge. Intriguing. May I enter? Perhaps. But what is it you expect to find within? Mm -hmm. I, seek, I seek the knowledge of the Elder Scrolls. Do you? 
It is true there are some here who have spent years studying the accumulated knowledge of the scrolls. But what you seek does not come easily, and can destroy those without a strong will. It would seem that the college has what you seek. The question now is what can you offer the college? Not, not just anyone is allowed inside. Those wishing to enter must show some degree of skill with magic. A small test, if you will. Um, I think we both know I'll succeed here. No, I'm afraid I don't know anything of the sort. Oh well, it was worth a try. I'll take your test then. Wait, actually, let's try this. Would you grant entry to the Dragonborn? Dragonborn? It's been so long since we've had any contact with the Greybeards. Do you really have the voice? I would be most impressed to see that. Okay. Luke! Now That's your voice. So the stories are true. You are Dragonborn. Indeed. Normally, you'd need to show some aptitude with one of the schools of magic. But you... I think there is much that we can learn from each other. I think you'll be a superb addition to the college. Welcome, apprentice. I'll lead you across the bridge. Once you're inside, you'll want to speak with Mirabelle Irvine, our master wizard. Please, follow me. So? Good. Glad we straightened that out. She asked me to, okay? So please don't, don't... I, I was on the college grounds, so... Alright, let's follow her across this bridge to the College of Winterhold. Impressive. It's not quite the same as killing a dragon, of course, and dragon priest. All within 10 minutes of each other, but still, it's pretty light. I guess it serves. Um, I think there's eternal snow here, so the um, clear skies shout won't actually do anything. And this looks dangerously dangerous. College of Winterhold discovered. I think there's more talking coming up, but really all I want to know is that Elder Scroll business. Yes, please keep going. I know I kind of ran past your trigger point, but... Yes? What did you need? I just... Fine, be gone then. Okay, so I'm guessing I'll have to find the library. Mm. Well, let's I just check. I I've made myself rather clear. Yes, of course. I'm simply trying to understand the reasoning behind the decision. You may be used to the Empire bowing to your every whim, but I'm afraid you'll find the Thalnor received no such treatment here. You are a guest of the College, here at the pleasure of the Archmage. I hope you appreciate the opportunity. Yes, of course. The Archmage has my thanks. Very good. Then we're done here. Yes? What did you need? Okay, fine. I want to go to the library, but I think I need to talk to her first. Welcome to the College. I was told to come see you. I wasn't, but I guess I might have been. Another new student. I'm surprised at how many of you there are lately. Well, first you'll need these. While you're not required to wear them, you may find them more to your liking than your current clothes. I'll give you a brief tour, and then we'll get you to your first class. Are you ready to begin? Um, sorry, I'm not ready for that just yet. I see. Well, please let me know when you are. Yes? What did you need? All I want is that library. Which I think was in this tower? Don't quote me, though. The Arcaneum might have been the right place. Looks like the right place. Yep. Okay, so here's the librarian. I don't okay. want to see you treating any of these books poorly. Are we clear? Um, 
you have a bit of an overbite. So let's talk to Urak Groshop. You are now in the Arcanium, of which I am in charge. It might as well be my own little plane of oblivion. Disrupt my Arcanium, and I will have you torn apart by angry Atronox. Now, do you require assistance? Um... Uh, I'm looking for an Elder Scroll. And what do you plan to do with it? Do you even know what you're asking about? Or are you just someone's errand boy? Of course I do. Do you have one here? You think that even if I did have one here, I would let you see it? It would be kept under the highest security. The greatest thief in the world wouldn't be able to lay a finger on it. About that. What about the Dragonborn? What about... Wait. Are you... Were you the one the Greybeards were calling? I'll bring everything we have on them, but it's not much. So don't get your hopes up. It's mostly lies, leavened with rumor and conjecture. Mm, okay. Sure. Fight well. Yes? What did you need? We're gonna have to talk about your tongue for a bit. Yes. I, I want what? it to nail to a tree somewhere very far go. away. Try not to spill anything on them. Okay, so effects of the Elder Scrolls. I'm gonna read these out, so bear with me um, and my accent. It is widely known among scholars that the Elder Scrolls entail a certain hazard in their very reading. The mechanism of the effects has, at present, been largely unknown. Theories of hidden knowledge and divine retribution were the subject of idle speculation with little investigation. I, Justinius Polunius, have undertaken to thoroughly document the ailments afflicted by the Elder Scrolls on their readers. Though a unified theory of how they manifest continues to elude me and remains a subject of future study. I have grouped the effects into four, finding that the avenue of experience depends largely upon the mind of the reader. If this is unclear, I hope that a proper dichotomy will lay it plain. Group the first, the knaves. For one who has received no training in the history or nature of the Elder Scroll, the scroll itself is effectively inert. No prophecy can be scried, nor knowledge obtained. While the scroll will not impart learning to the uninformed, nor will it afflict it will it afflict them in any adverse fashion. Visually, the scroll will appear to be awash in odd lettering and symbols. Those who know their astronomy often claim to recognize constellations in the patterns and connections, but such conjecture is impossible to further investigate, since the very nature of the study necessitates unlearned subjects. Group the second, the unguarded intellects. It is this group that, that realizes the greatest danger from attempting to read the scrolls. These are subjects who have an understanding of the nature of the Elder Scrolls and possess sufficient knowledge to actu actually read what's inscribed there. They have not, however, developed adequate discipline to stave off the mind-shattering effect of having a glimpse of inf infinity. These unfortunate souls are struck immediately, irrevocably, and completely blind. Such is the price for overreaching one's faculties. It bears mentioning, though, that with the blindness also comes a fragment of that hidden knowledge. Whether the future, the past, or the deep natures of being is dependent on the individual and their place in the greater spheres. But the knowledge does come. Group the third. Mediate, mediated understanding. Mediated understanding. Alone in Tamriel, it would appear that only the cult of the ancestor moth has discovered the discipline to properly guard one's mind when reading the strolls. Their novitiates must undergo the most rigorous mental cultivation, and they often spend a decade or more at the monastery before being allowed to read their first Elder Scroll. The monks say that this is for the initiate's own protection, as they must have witnessed many unguarded intellects among their more eager ranks. With appropriate fortitude, these readers also receive blindness, though at a far lesser magnitude than the unguarded. Their vision fogs slightly, but they retain shape, color, and enough acuity to continue to read mundane text. The knowledge they gain from the stroll is also tempered somewhat. It requires stages of meditation and reflection to fully appreciate and express what one saw. Group the fourth, Illuminated Understanding. Between the previous group and this one exists a continuum that has, at present, 
only been transpersed by the monks of the ancestor moth. With continued reading, the monks become gradually more and more blind, but receive greater and more detailed knowledge. As they spend their waking hours pondering the revelations, they also receive a further degree of mental fortitude. There is, for every monk, a day of penultimate reading, when the only knowledge the Elder Scroll imparts is that the monk's next reading shall be his last. For each monk, the penultimate reading comes at a different and un unknowable time. Preliminary work has been done to predict the occurrence by charting the severity of an individual monk's blindness, but all who reach these later stages report that the increasing blindness seems to taper with increased readings. Some post the notion that some other unseen sense is, in fact, in fact continuing to diminish at this upper range, but I shall leave such postulations to philosophers. To prepare for his ultimate reading, a monk typically withdraws to seclusion in order to reflect upon a lifetime of revelations and appoint his mind for reception of his last. Upon this final reading, he is forever blinded, as sure as those unguarded ones who raised, the knowledge, who raised to knowledge. The illuminated one, though, has retained his understanding over a lifetime, and typically possesses a more integral notion of what has been revealed to him. It is hoped that this catalogue will prove useful to those who wish to further our immortal understanding of the Elder Scrolls. The moth priests remain aloof with these measures, taking the gradual debilitation that comes with reading as a point of pride. May this serve as a useful starting point for those hoping to take up such study. Dictated to Anstius Mertmetschum, fourth of last seat in this 126th year of the second era. All right. And ruminations on the Elder Scrolls. I'm sorry this is quite a lot of reading, but it's interesting to my mind. Imagine living beneath the waves with a strong-sided blessing of most excellent fabric. Holding the fabric over your gills, you would begin to breathe, drink its warp and weft. Through the plant matter fibers imbue your soul. The wretched plankton would pollute the cloth until it stank to heavens of prophecy. This is one matter in which the scrolls first came to pass. But are we the sea, or the breath breather, or the fabric? Or are we the breath itself? Can we flow, flow through the scrolls as knowledge flows through, being the water, or are we stuck morass of, of sea filth that gathers on, the ed gathers on the edge? This is strange. Imagine again this time, but different. A bird cresting the wind is lifted by a gust and downed by a stone. But the stone can come from above if the bird is upside down. Where then did the gust come from? And which direction? Did the god send either, or has the bird decreed their presence by her own mind-making. The old side of the scroll makes a turning of the minds such that relative positions are absolute in their primacy. I ask you again to imagine for me. This time you are beneath the ground, a tiny acorn planted by some well-meaning elf maiden of the woodlands for her pleasure. You wish to grow but fear what you may become, so you push off the water, the dirt, the sun, to stay in your hole. But it is in the very pushing that you become a tree in spite of yourself. How did that happen? The acorn is a kind of tree egg in this instant, and the knowledge is water and sun. We are the chicken inside the egg, but also the dirt. The knowledge from the scrolls is what we push against to become full-sighted ourselves. One final imagining before your mind closes from the shock of ever knowing. You are now a flame burning bright blue with a vast emptiness. In time you see your brothers and sisters burning in their own on in the distance along your side. A sea of pinpoints, a constellation of memories. Each burns bright, then flickers. Then two more take its place, but not forever lest the void fills with rancid light that sucks the thought. Each of our minds is actually the emptiness, and the learnings of the scroll are the pinpoints. Without their stabbing light, my consciousness would be as vast nothing would be as a vast nothingness, unknowing its emptiness as a void is unknowing to it of itself. But the burnings are dangerous, and must be carefully tended and minded and brought to themselves and spread to their siblings. Alright, so... I guess we can agree that that was a nutcase. Who wrote that second book? I don't want to... Hundreds of years have gone into assembling this collection. It's going to stay pristine, understand? Okay, this rumination book is incomprehensible. Aye, that's the work of Septimus Cygnus. He's the world's master of the nature of Elder Scrolls, but, well, he's been gone for a long while. Too long. Where did he go? Somewhere up north, in the ice fields. 
He said he found some old Dwemer artifact. But well, that was years ago. Ugh. Haven't heard from him since. Okay. Oh, he's also got the rise and fall of the plates. That's nice. And by the way, um, it's always allowed to read books, but taking them, that would be theft, so... Well, I could... I was allowed to take the Elder Scrolls books, which he gave me. And now, um, if you remember, he told us we have to go to the ice fields to find the apparently leading f scholar on the matter of Elder Scrolls, I would guess. And that is up there. And I don't know the best and safest way um, to get there. There were some places where you could just jump down and hit the water, but... I'm not too keen on risking it, but I will. After quick saving, of course. Yes? What did you need? Apparently I can't jump over this. Well, this works. Oh, by the way, look at my cool new mask. <laughs> uh, was there water down below? No, that would probably be fatal, right? Well, I'm guessing I'm kind of past the point of safe return. So let's just try and see if I can hit the water. Ah! Not deep enough. Oh well, it was worth a shot. Um, I know there was some place where you could like jump down and it would be fine, but that was not the right one. I guess I could try from here, but really I'll just... Winter holds glory days may lie behind it, but the college lives on. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll just take the safe route, I guess. Don't want to die again. This should be survivable, right? Yes. And then I can just get down here, and that'll be fine as well. Now, be aware, I don't like this next bit. It's deep water again, and it's totally not the kind of thing I enjoy. As I've told you before, I guess. There's not many enemies, ah! though, so... Wow. So all those jumps were fine, but that last one took some health off. Oh well. So this is kind of pack ice, which is... Well, not something you would ideally want to walk over, because it's treacherous. But in-game, it's not. I think it's fairly solid. In real life, though, if you ever, well, happen to be in a situation where you have to traverse pack ice, um, be aware that it is not, well, it's not very strong at all times. It can be quite treacherous, as I said. Um, it's kind of the ice that's breaking up. Oh, look, a hawker. It's ice that's breaking up and reforming and stuff, but um, because it's kind of in a state of semi-moltenness, it's fairly unsolid. So it's cracked and not very thick, and occasionally it'll just crack and you'll die. Okay, I want to get out as quick as possible, please. Thank you. I need to get to that particular iceberg, I guess. Oh, there's more hawkers. And my tinnitus just kicked in. But that usually solves itself after a while. Oh wait, there's one still alive. Well, never mind that. 
sure it didn't see me. Okay, and that happens to be the right direction. Guessing there's no more need to fight anything, probably. Alright, so we discovered Septimus Cygnus' outpost. Septimus Cygnus. Lots of S sounds. Alright, so let's talk to the guy. Dig, Dwemer in the beyond. I'll know your lost unknown and rise to your depths. He's nuts. I heard you know about Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls, indeed. The Empire, they absconded with them. Or so they think. The ones they saw. <laughs> the ones they thought they saw. I know of one. Forgotten. Sequestered. But I cannot go to it. Not poor Septimus. For I... I have arisen beyond its grasp. So where is the scroll? Here. Well, here as in this plain. Mondas. Tamriel. Nearby, relatively speaking. <laughs> On the cosmological scale, well, it's all nearby. Can you help me get the Elder Scroll or not? One block lifts the other. Septimus will give what you want, but you must bring him something in return. What do you want? You see this masterwork of the Dwemer. Deep inside their greatest knowings. Septimus is clever among men, but he is but an idiot child compared to the dullest of the Dwemer. Lucky then they left behind their own way of reading the Elder Scrolls. In the depths of Black Reach, one yet lies. Have you heard of Black Reach? Cast upon where Drimmer City slept, the yearning spire hidden learnings kept. <laughs> where is this Black Reach? Under deep, below the dark, the hidden keep, Tower Mzark. Oftan, the point of puncture, a first entry of the tapping. Delve to its limits. And Black Reach lies just beyond. But not all can enter there. Only Septimus knows the hidden key to loose the lock to jump beneath the deathly rock. Alright, we'll continue this in the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye bye. Key to loose the lock to jump beneath the deathly rock. Alright, I'll guess I'll just finish this dialogue this episode. How do I get in? Two things I have for you. Two shapes. One edged, one round. The round one for tuning. Dwemer music is soft and subtle, and needed to open their cleverest gates. The edged lexicon for inscribing. To us, a hunk of metal. To the Dwemer, a full library of knowings. But... Empty. Find Mazark and its Sky Dome. The machinations there will read the scroll and lay the lore upon the cube. Trust Septimus. He knows you can know. Whatever. Yes? What did you need? No sense in talking to that guy any more than I really must. Because he is quite clearly crazy. Anyway, now it really is the end of this episode. I'll be seeing you all again very soon. Bye-bye.